<laughs> like for example you know that you should do something yeah and you know that there is that procrastinating tendency inside you uh -huh. that uh, you know you should be doing it but there is that some feeling which is lurking inside you know facebook <laughs> 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 yeah so that's what people do and one of the biggest remedies of rahu also i feel is that you should you should keep distract you should not put yourself in a position where you know that you will get distracted you know there's this uh, two things which in scripture there's you know yama and dama you know? so one thing is that you mentally abstain okay i know that you know oh, this is not good for me then i stay away from but now suppose you physically uh, you are too much into drug addiction or something like that, and you and you take a mental resolution that i will not take drugs from tomorrow that's fine that's great but at the same time externally if you are going again and again and meeting those friends who are you know pulling you into drugs and then you go and boast there that oh i have this will power you know i will stay with them i will not take drugs no that doesn't work like that so external and internal internally you have to put that pause button and externally also if rahu is not well placed if you feel that you always have difficulties then you have to put yourself in a position where you don't have to cut a sorry figure and as uh -huh. a can always put yourself in good company go and visit a spiritual community rather than yeah they they say sometimes that rahu is what you call healthy selfishness okay. because because you have to do what you need to do for yourself before you can do anything for anybody else yes so it's very important to like you said not to distract yourself but the rahu person is the most distracted so so they so so that's why they have to be selfish in removing distractions yeah me. that that is why they say no charity begins at home yeah so i close my computer down turn down the tablet turn off my cell phone and i just put on some soft music and just uh listen and then I'll maybe do some meditation because otherwise there's too much distraction from technology and this is medically also proved and this is related so what happens is suppose let's take the example of facebook so suppose somebody uh, is sitting in the workplace and he is doing something in facebook you know parallelly you know checking this checking that like that is so then what happens is he gets used to that so much that he is unable to do one thing at a time so now the problem is throughout the day you may be using facebook but what about when you are sleeping when you are closing your eyes because you are habituated to do two things parallelly then when you are sleeping you are officially you are not using facebook but what happens your mind is going on like this and that's then you, that's probably why i'm a baseball player in many of my dreams <laughs> and that's why you can't sleep and then your body is not well rejuvenated in the morning and then that's that's why then then again you feel that you know this life is not good then again you will do that more so it's like a vicious cycle you know you do not sleep properly because there are le different levels of sleep if you do not go to that third level as they say then your body doesn't uh, refresh itself properly no uh, whatever it is i'm not going to the terminology but the point is the same thing happens when you are sitting with somebody else also i have seen people you know you are talking to them and they are like mm, yeah actually yeah, yeah you know life's good you know <laughs> it doesn't work like that so we should uh, know when to use rahu and you know not not just uh, let rahu use us all over the place you know it's like that's very dangerous and that hampers a lot of relationships and but anything. um rahu very well placed in the chart can show amazing musician um amazing celebrity like actor actress musician uh creative ability so usually uh it's a blessing and a curse 
Uh, a, a great chart that I like to use is Amy Winehouse. She was a uh, exalted Rahu ascendant, Rahu Taurus ascendant. And uh, so often you see this blessing of all of this expression, but if it's not expressed properly, destruction and escape. And, and like Bobby Jeet say, it's our perception. So we can either think of Rahu as an angel or a demon, but the truth is just like us, he's both. Now, if you want to, Rahu will manifest like a demon if you are constantly thinking about the future, if you are constantly acting out of fear, if you are constantly thinking about the past, if, if you are constantly trying to control. But thinking about the past and the future and thinking about your fears will make Rahu the worst demon in your life. Also, Rahu can be guardian angel. If we can only live in this moment, if we can live in the today, it starts with the day, then it goes to an hour, then it goes to a minute, then it goes to a second. But can Bobby G, G and I enjoy each second that we have with each other today? I hope so. I have. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> So I think, again, if you have difficult karma with Rahu, try to remove the future and past from your mind because only in the moment can you truly experience the bliss. And there are lots of writers, Eckhart Tolle, Power of Now, Be Here Now, Ram Das. Lots of spiritual teachers and speakers are saying a similar message. Yeah, in fact, Krishna also says in the Gita, na, Brahma Bhuta Prasanna Atma Naso Chati Na Kangshati. One who is situated in transcendence is not thinking of sochati kangshati. It means he is not hankering or lamenting. Lamenting means crying for something which you lost in the past. And hankering means wanting something which you don't have. Maybe you want it somewhere in the future. So one who is not doing this too is... Actually, that's what people ask. That, you know, how can we stop thinking about the past or future? Well, the problem is it's not so easy because Krishna says that one who has achieved this is actually in transcendence. So when you say that somebody has uh, is not thinking of the past or the future, it means essentially you are saying the person has realized that I am not this body, I am the Atma. That's what essentially it means. And that is why it is so difficult. So Krishna also says, you know, Sama Sarvesh, Sarveshu Bhuteshu Mad Bhakti Milavati Param. That is the time when his spiritual... Uh, practices actually begin to be very honest <laughs> so the thing is that we, we should that, then you can take it the other way around that if we elevate our consciousness spiritually then we are automatically achieving that artificially we cannot pretend that you know okay you know we will not think of the past or the future that's how the current society is going about doing all these things you know oh just think that you are in the present you are not in the past not in the future but that cannot be achieved artificially unless you elevate your consciousness spiritually. And when you do that, you get that as a byproduct. It's like automatically achieved, you know, because the mind is peaceful. The mind is calm that time. Anyways, it's been a long time, I think. Thank you very much. <laughs> Anything else you would like to share? Thank you. Thank you. And I think all the remedies we discussed will also elevate the spirituality so the person can definitely, be more. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Thank you very much. And as we you, discussed Bobby. earlier, depending on the response, we will see if we should continue it for all the planets. Okay. Excellent. If not, another topic soon as well. Om Namah Shivaya. Definitely. Thank you very much. Namaste. Namaste.